To all the geeks and nerds out there, today I'd like to talk about Wither Skeleton Farms in 1.16. This is a topic we've done before on the channel, but there's been some changes. And so I've been busy in the creative test world, created a whole bunch of different designs, and I'd like to show you them today, show you how they work and how you can build them. And here is one of the farms we're going to be looking at today. You can see there's a spawning platform in the center covered in wither roses. There's also some dogs along the middle that will encourage the, the wither skeletons uh, to move towards the edge. And then we have uh, some piglins on the other side of some portals that attract the wither skeletons and they enter the portal super fast and get removed from the mob cap. Once the wither skeletons have appeared in the overworld, they will drop and take some fall damage. And then they will go through another portal and enter the nether to the killing area. And then you can swing your sword to get the loot and this farm with a looting three sword will give you over 530 skulls per hour. So if you're interested and you want to learn how to build this thing, then stay tuned. But before I show you how to build that farm, there is a big warning in that that version will not work on a server, but I do have a variation that will and it's actually a lot simpler. So stay tuned for that and let's get into it. But first, I'd like to talk about some of the changes in 1.16 and also some other information. So when we take a closer look at those farms, it will make a bit more sense. But the first thing to mention is that everything here has been designed and tested in Java edition 1.16. If you're on bedrock, then some of this stuff is not going to work. And yeah, it'll be a bit different. First of all, what has changed in 1.16? Probably the biggest change for Wither Skeleton Farms in 1.16 is that only Wither Skeletons can spawn inside Wither Roses. So previously any mob could spawn inside these flowers and they would start taking damage and die immediately. Uh, the, the Wither Skeleton of course does not take damage and so that is the change now to make this uh, consistent with other blocks. So for example Magma Blocks, um, only mobs that are fire resistant can spawn on Magma Blocks. And so now the Wither Skeleton is the only mob that can spawn inside Wither Roses. The next change is that mobs can be moved in lava. So if you put a wither skeleton inside lava, it, uh, it pushes it along. Now it's very slow. And of course this will only work for mobs that are fire resistant. But yeah, this is something that we're gonna use in one of our farms a bit later on. 1.16 has also introduced these new mobs. These are the piglins and piglins and wither skeletons do not get on at all. They both uh, aggro to each other and they both will go, you know, given the opportunity, will try and fight each other. So let's see what happens. <laughs> they both go after each other and of course the wither skeleton will win. But yeah, this is another mechanic that we're going to use in our farms. The final change I want to talk about in 1.16 is some of the new biomes that are now in the nether and these are ideal locations for uh, building your wither skeleton farm. Obviously you need a fortress uh, but if we look out for these two uh, biomes in particular these are really going to help out your rates and reduce the work because you won't have to spawn proof the area. So the first one we're going to look at here is a soul sand valley. These, uh, this, uh, this biome only spawns skeletons, uh, endermen and ghasts but uh, they only spawn them very infrequently and so this will, uh, this will slightly eat into your rates but it means you don't have to uh, spawn proof the area likewise with the wolf forest very similar indeed as well this uh, this bind will only spawn will only spawn uh, enderman and again very infrequently and so building a uh, fortress farm inside either of these two biomes uh, will save you a lot of work Next up, let's talk about some details that's going to make some more sense once we start looking at the farms. And as we know already, a piglin and a wither skeleton do not get on. But this uh, this circle here I've, I've laid out, this is a, uh, a circle with a radius of 16 blocks uh, with a piglin in the center. And this is the range that a, that a wither skeleton will aggro towards a piglin. So if I stick him anywhere inside this green, in this green circle, uh, he will uh, see the piglin and try and attack him. Uh, but uh, if I place him on one of these red blocks outside, he's too far away and he's not he's not interested at all he's going to go for a little walk in fact so there we go that is the range at which um, we need to get our wither skeletons uh, close to our piglins so if you're going to use piglins as bait in your farm uh, think about this range and uh, yeah this is how close you need your your wither skeletons to get before they start running over towards the piglin Next up, let's talk about man's best friend because he is going to be very useful in our farms. The reason for that is because dogs will will scare wither skeletons. And uh, here I've laid out the range at which a wither skeleton will be scared from a dog. So here he is in the center and it's this green area. So anywhere inside here. So if I put a wither skeleton here, for example, he will see the dog and run away pretty quickly trying to get away. But if I put a wither skeleton on the red area just outside, then yeah, he's not too interested. He's not too bothered whatsoever. He's quite happy to stand there. So this is going to be very useful in our farms. So we're going to use a combination of some dogs and also some piglins so what we can do here is we can have some dogs in one area that will move uh, the wither skeletons away from the dog and then they get them close enough to the piglins to then move them the other way so here we can uh, not we don't need to use sort of redstone or, or slime sweepers or anything like that we can use the ai of being scared of dogs and uh, be attracted uh, you know to kill and attract uh, these piglins 
Now it's time to talk about this scary lot. These are the mobs that will spawn inside a fortress. Now, of course, we are interested in the wither skeletons. So these are the ones we are going to have to deal with one way or the other. So for some farms, it's good enough to just have the wither roses, which we've already spoken about. But for some farms, there's some extra complications and we need uh, a few extra measures to make sure the other mobs don't spawn. Now we'll get onto that in a bit more detail when we talk about the actual farms themselves. But as a quick overview, here we have a magma cube and a magma cube can spawn in any light level. So we can't use torches or anything else uh, to stop them, but they do need a three by three area to spawn so you can use something like slabs or even lava uh, to stop them from spawning so that's that's one trick that we'll come on to a bit later on when it comes to wither skeletons and also skeletons as well they need light level seven or less to spawn so if it's too bright then they won't spawn so we need to manage the light levels and make sure they've got enough you know enough darkness uh, to, to spawn and then we have the, the blaze and also the zombified piglin. They both need light level 11 and and, uh, and less to spawn. So we need to light up the area a bit more for those, for those guys. And uh, yeah, that will stop them spawning if we get it to light level 12 or above. While we're on the topic of fortress mobs and how they spawn, let's talk about the blocks that they can spawn on. So imagine this here is a walkway inside your fortress, and of course it's normally made of nether bricks, just like this. But what we can do is we can replace some of these blocks with any other block, and mobs will also spawn on those blocks as well, as long as those blocks are inside the bounding box of a segment that makes up the structure itself. There's also another quirk in the game, which we're going to make use of um, to our advantage that will be removed soon, but uh, it's not going to break the farms. It's just going to make them a little less efficient. And that is that if you were to have a platform made of nether bricks that's outside the bounding box of the segments of the structure, but inside the bounding box of the entire fortress, then fortress mobs can also spawn on these blocks. But that's only if they're made of nether brick. If they're made of other, other blocks here, so if you had a, a grass platform here, for example, outside of these, these bounding boxes, then fortress mobs will not spawn on that. Now we're going to use that to our advantage for this thing over here which is to uh, increase uh, some spawns using pack spawning what is pack spawning and how can it help well we've got a little demonstration here uh, to show you so imagine that this grass area here is our spawning platform of course in our actual farm this will be covered in wither roses but to uh, to demonstrate imagine that we actually add on top of that we add this five wide uh, platform here made of nether brick and we're going to cover it with buttons um, to make sure that no mobs can spawn on it but what the game will do is the game will pick a block to try and spawn a mob, but it will also try and spawn mobs around it. So imagine that it will pick one of these blocks here. It won't, be able to, it won't be able to spawn here because of the buttons, but it will try and continue to spawn the rest of the pack. So in this case here, we've got the game try to spawn the mob here, but failed but it then continued to spawn another three mobs inside our farm. So because of this extra platform here, we've now gained three extra spawns, which we wouldn't have got if this platform here wasn't here. The last thing to talk about is nether portals because as you've seen at the beginning of this video we're going to use these uh, for one of our farms. So first of all uh, some basics. Uh, when you want to link up a portal from the overworld to the nether what you need to do is you need to take the coordinates of the inner nether the x and the z coordinates and divide them by eight that will give you the overworld coordinates and also try and keep the the y level the same. Now if you've got multiple portals that you want to link up then take the center point of all of those portals and do the same maths that will give you the uh, the right coordinates in the overworld so that's how you do your linking up. And and the other thing to, to mention is that uh, portals emit light. They actually emit light level 11. So uh, if I um, come up here, I've actually got a mod installed that will show us the light level. So if I press my hotkey, there we go. We can see that over here, we've got uh, light level 10 on this white concrete here. And uh, it's quite hard to see because of the, the, the portal itself. Uh, but uh, these obsidian blocks here are actually at light level 11. So you can see here in the middle, we've got a two. That's because this is at light level 12. The reason for that is that behind here, I've actually added a torch in the center. And of course, torches are at light level 14. So uh, for each block, we move away from the light source. It, it decreases the light level. So we're at 14 here, 13 here, and then 12 here. So this is something else we're going to talk about because these, uh, if um, if some of these, these obsidian blocks here are inside the fortress, as we, as we spoke about over here, then these fortress mobs can actually spawn inside the portal on the obsidian. Now for uh, for some of the farms we want to stop that so we're going to have to use uh, some light and also some slabs which we'll talk about in more detail to make sure that our fortress mobs can't spawn uh, inside the portal itself. The other thing to mention up here is that uh, if you have an entity that goes through a portal they actually have a cooldown of 15 seconds before they can go through another portal. So when we deal with these in the overworld we'll come on to that in a bit more detail when we see the farm but yeah we actually have to slow down the, the, uh, the mobs they can't go directly from one portal to another because their cooldown will stop them if you try and do it. And now with the theory out of the way, let's talk about uh, the Wither Skeleton Farms. And first of all, the most important thing is location. So here we are inside a Soul Sand Valley, which is one of the ideal ideal biomes to build this in. And I found a fortress. Now this fortress is very special uh, because it's got what's called a double intersection. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look. 
Probably the best thing to do here is to show you how a fortress is actually made up and it's made up of a lots of different pieces. So I have a mod installed that will show you all of these pieces and here they are. So all of these red boxes, these are the different uh, segments, the different pieces of the fortress and these are plugged together like a jigsaw puzzle um, when, the, when the fortress is generated. And as you can see, they are all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Now the ones we're interested in are these ones right here. These are called intersections and they are the biggest of all the pieces and they are basically a crossroads that are just open. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no structure above them anything like that that is a crossroads now we have one intersection here and i've marked the center of it with a gold block and that block is lined up with the the top block of the of the um of the walkway now we've got one here and we've also got another one right next door to it just over here and i've also marked this one with a gold block as well so we've got these two blocks ma uh, marking out the center now that will be uh, important later on when we look at our farms now what i've also done here is as you can see is i've uh, I've, I've i've spawn proofed all of the fortress so no fortress mobs can spawn here whatsoever but of course here we've got some fortress mobs so what's happened here well the we have some other blocks here we have these soul sand and soul soil here that are intersecting our, and are inside um, these bounding boxes of the segments of the the pieces of the fortress and as we said earlier fortress mobs can spawn on any block inside these inside these uh, these boxes so um, what we need to do actually here is we need to either remove these blocks or we need to spawn proof them and that will stop uh, the fortress mobs uh, from spawning uh, entirely so we need to make sure we do that across the whole of the fortress so we don't so we can control where these mobs are spawning now you don't need this mod to do that although of course it's very it's very useful and there'll be a link to it in the description uh, but uh, if you don't have it then keep an eye out for fortress mobs spawning and that means there'll be blocks like this uh, that you've missed uh, the other thing is if you do see uh, these blocks close by to the fortress then you can just remove them and that will that will solve that problem all right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clear out this area to make way for some farms we're going to build but also talk about some spawn proofing we need to do over there. And as if by magic, the area has been cleared out, ready for some farms to be built. I've also left the gold blocks here as reference, just to make sure we build things in the right place. But just to make sure, I can uh, turn my mod on again. And as you can see, it's a bit clearer to see here. We've got these two big, uh, these two big sections next to each other, two big intersections. Also around it, we've still got the bounding boxes of the walkways, as you can see. Now that will be uh, a bit more important later on when we talk about some of the farms. So remember that they are here still uh, as well. Now the other thing to talk about is a bit more about mob spawning, and that is that. So obviously you can see I've, I've uh, spawn proofed all of the fortress. I've also removed any blocks that are close to uh, close to the, the fortress itself so we don't get those extra mobs spawning. But it's possible that uh, some other mobs do spawn. Now, the AFK spot for some of our farms are going to be down there below but below where they're going to be built. In fact, you can see it there, that, that colored block down the bottom. That's going to be an AFK spot. Now, mobs will spawn within a, a sphere of the player of a 128 block radius. And that just so happens to intersect slightly with this other biome that's just outside. And and in fact, I can show you the sphere by uh, pretty much pressing my hotkey. Here is the spawning sphere if our AFK spot is over there. And as you can see, it uh, cuts into this biome just a little bit, but that is enough to affect our rates. So what you need to do here is make sure that if there's any other biomes that are close by that are within 128 blocks of your AFK spot, then make sure you spawn proof these as well. So here I've used buttons, but you can use uh, buttons or pressure plates or slabs. You can use lava. There's a bunch of different blocks you can use, uh, but just make sure that you spawn proof this area to make sure no other mobs uh, can spawn and affect your rates. Anyway, now it's time to build some farms. And here is the first farm we're going to look at. And if you've been on the channel for a little while, you may recognize it. This is my 1.14 with a skeleton farm. And so what I've done here is I've just added it uh, to our 1.16 well to see how it performs. And actually it performs better than ever. <laughs> so if you've already built this farm in your world, then there's no need to do anything because this this still works just fine. And as you can see here, we've got our spawning platforms with wither roses. We've got dogs on this side of the farm, which will scare the wither skeletons over to uh, over to this side of the spawning platforms. And over here, we uh, we use uh, we use the iron golems to attract the wither skeletons. Um, we can use piglins uh, in uh, 1.16, but uh, we before piglins were around, we had to use uh, iron golems. And of course, then the wither skeletons will run towards them. They try to get to the the iron golems, and they fall down uh, this hole right here. They fall down, land in this lava which makes sure they all drop from the same distance and they go down into the killing area below where they are a one hit kill we've got a player down there that's uh, that can kill the mobs i've actually got uh, some command blocks over here doing the killing for us so we keep getting the mobs but yeah this works just fine in 1.16 so if you want to learn how to build this step by step then as there's a video on my channel already and i'll stick a link to it in the description and in 1.16 what are the rates well 
got this one as I said is performing better than ever and what we can do here is I've, I've, uh, I've added all the rates inside here so for this one I did a five hour test and I was able to get on average 355 skulls per hour so that is no <laughs> that is the not too shabby at all of course that's using a looting three sword very important indeed but yeah so this is a good a good design if you want to use uh, just a single intersection this one will work just fine so what is this? Well, this is my 1.14 farm, but converted to 1.16. So I've taken away the golems and I've replaced them with piglins. And I've also simplified the build a little bit. So there are a few less blocks required and it's actually a little bit simpler to build, especially over here where the bait is. So uh, using piglins, uh, the build is a bit simpler. You don't need enchantment tables or anything like that. Uh, no special alignment. And as you can see, uh, it works great. And in fact, it works slightly better. So uh, the rates when I tested this one for five hours, I was getting 358 skulls. So that might just be the RNG but uh, yeah a couple of extra skulls uh, so this is the most efficient farm now I've tested a bunch of different variations uh, for single intersections and this one turns out to be the best and the reason for that is that uh, we we maximize the spawn the spawnage so there's uh, the maximize the spawn the spawning blocks there's no kind of piglins in the center here with blocks around them so we maximize as many uh, uh, spawning blocks as possible for the skeletons and also it's the shortest distance that uh, we can get for for the uh, for the the wither skeletons to get to the killing area so I've tried this before with with piglins at both at two sides and what happens there is that uh, the the wither skeletons come off of the platform quite quickly but then you've got to get them to a, a single point and so then underneath here you have some more walkways and they end up walking for longer staying around longer and then that 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 affects the rate so if you want to build the most efficient farm um, that i've tested at least uh, then this is designed to go for and there'll be a world download in the description if you want to grab it now let's talk about our portal base farm and there are going to be two variations for it. So one is good for single player and one is good for a server. So we'll talk about the single player version first and then we'll talk about the server version. So make sure you build the correct one uh, depending on where you're playing. Uh, we'll talk about the reasons why there are two variations in a bit. But yeah, let's get into it and talk about the single player version first. Last of all, let's take a detailed look at our, our portal based farm. And uh, don't forget, there'll be a world download in the description if you want to build it for yourself and get all of the finer details, all of the measurements, that kind of thing. But yeah, let me talk about this for a second. So here we have our spawning platform. So the grass area, and this is on a double intersection as before. So that's a 38 by 19 area uh, of the grass blocks. We also have uh, the usual uh, nether brick around the outside so we benefit from the pack spawning and then around the outside we have uh, two piglins on each side on the long sides just over here we have portals in uh, in between them and the spawning platforms and then we have these dogs along the center so here you can probably guess that the dogs are here for any wither skeletons that spawn in the center they're too far away from the piglins uh, to uh, to aggro towards them so these dogs are here to uh, encourage the pig the uh, wither skeletons to move slightly this way or towards the other way then they're close enough to the piglins to aggro and they will run right through the portal and over to the overworld which we'll uh, look at uh, in more detail in a second so let's talk about uh, some of these uh, the details over here with the portal you can see here we've got some extra blocks and uh, so what's the reasoning for this well that is to make sure we don't get the other fortress mob spawning inside the portal because we just want with the skeletons uh, in this particular farm so that's possible because we have these these segments here that go across part of the intersection and that means that some of the bounding boxes of the segments will intersect with the portals and then that means that any any fortress mob could spawn on them so what we need to do here is we lay down these slabs all the way along that stops that stops the magma cubes from spawning inside the portals we also have the torches here as we saw before to make sure the light level inside the portal is at light level 12 over here where we have the piglin all boxed in we don't have room for the torches so we have some shroom lights over here they emit a light level of 15 uh, which is one more than the the torches but of course they're one more block away so that means that all of the blocks inside the portal are at light level 12. so if i turn my my mod on we can see here we have uh, twos along all the way here so that's the 12 all the way along on the, the portal blocks themselves and we can see in our spawning platform we have light level seven and below so the portal doesn't uh, interfere with the spawning of the wither skeletons over here due to its light level because it's far enough away all right now when it comes to the dogs we have uh, a dog at each end in the center on on top of the uh, the the uh, the nether brick and we have this bar of glass here uh, to stop the wither skeletons running out if they're scared of the dogs we also have uh, three three additional dogs in the center so these two here so this one here and also the other one so these are on top of the gold blocks from before so these are on top of the these are central uh, to the uh, to the two uh, intersections this one and also this one here and then we have another dog in between them uh, as best you can uh, you'll get an, there's an even number of blocks here so it can't be exactly in the middle but as close as you can to the middle you put your your 
your fifth dog just like that and all of these uh, platforms are exactly the same uh, all three platforms and so then all of the uh, the, uh, the the wither skeletons go across to the overworld and we'll we'll take a look at that in a minute but what happens is they'll end up coming back into the nether down here in the, into this killing area so here is the portal the portal has a boat inside it with a with two chickens that means that uh, when the wither skeleton comes through it'll get pushed out uh, into the killing area and uh, the boat has to have an entity inside it so the boat doesn't go through the portal. Um, I'll show you a little trick of how to set that up uh, in a second, but uh, we'll do the same thing in the overworld as well. And then the mobs will come out of the portal, they will land on some slabs with some uh, hoppers underneath and with a looting three sword here are the rates here are the numbers so i did a five hour test and the average was 535 skulls per hour which is actually insane <laughs> and of course there are some other drops we haven't mentioned the other drops but of course don't forget you'll get bones coal and swords so you'll get uh, almost 24,000 bones 15,000 coal and the most important drop of all if you want to open your stone sword shop is you'll get over 1,123 stone swords now that is epic <laughs> so I've got my contraption over here I've got some redstone and some contraptions just to kill the wither skeletons uh, you don't need that in the in, in the actual the actual build so let's go over to the overworld and check that side out and see what's going on Welcome to the sunny overworld and as you can see our, our wither skeletons are coming through the portal at quite a clip <laughs> and of course just like in the nether we've got a, we've got a, a boat with some chickens in it to make sure they get pushed out there's some blocks along the back so they can't get stuck on that side uh, but we'll talk about that in a bit a bit later on and one thing I should say is that uh, if you download the maps there is uh, a command block here and also in the nether side with a button on it that will take you uh, to the appropriate place so if you click that button you'll go to the nether side and if you click the button in the nether you'll come here just to make it easy to navigate backwards and forwards uh, to these locations. So here we have uh, the wither skeletons coming out of the portal. They drop a few blocks to make sure they're well out of the way and don't get in the way of other wither skeletons coming behind them. They then go into this tube and actually they go into some water. So here we have 11 blocks of uh, water sources. So, so 11 all the way down down to about here there we go and you can see here there are some signs uh, on the wall and that is holding up the water sources so this is here to slow down the wither skeletons because as we spoke about earlier they've got a cool down before they can go into a portal again so this this holds them here for long enough about 15 seconds so then when they uh, are released at the bottom here they fall down and then they end up falling down this tube they fall down for another 32 blocks they land over here and that has taken enough time so they can now go through the portal they also take some full damage so when they get through to the nether side they're a one hit kill uh, with, a, with a reasonable sword at least and we've got some some lava here to push them along because sometimes you'll get the odd one or two like this one that gets a little bit stuck because there's so many going through and the uh, the lava will just push him in and normally it'll take a couple of seconds but he'll go through just like that and there we go and it's as simple as that that's all you need to do now the only complication really with this farm is to make sure the portals all link up so uh, make sure you experiment with those make sure you test out the portals are all linking um, sometimes if you see uh, if you see uh, wither skeletons uh, staying in the portal on the nether side that may mean that they're not linked up correctly so test them out with, with your player first uh, because mobs going through portals will not generate or link uh, portals properly so make sure you test them first with the player but then you should be able to link it up and it should all be good now let me show you how to set up your portal so no mobs get stuck inside the portal and they all get pushed out so what you need to do here is build your portal as you normally would so two along the bottom and then three up and then on the side that you want your wither skeletons to come out put two temporary blocks just in front of it just at the bottom just like that then add a few more temporary blocks underneath so this means you can place your boat just like that and then hop into your boat and push it right into the corner as far as it will go and what you can do here is to help is to press f3 and b this will give you your hitboxes of your boat so you can see it's right up against in that corner then just straighten your boat up a little bit just like this and then just go back and try and get it somewhat in the center uh, of the portal so i hop out now that's that's good enough that's in the center for me and then get a couple of chickens so we're going to spawn one in here and push him into the boat and another one and push him in as well so that means that no with the skeletons will get stuck in the boat and that means the boat won't get transported back through the portal itself next thing to do is to have two pistons over here and then get a couple of glass blocks just like that now we're going to power the pistons so that will push push the um push the glass into the boat or push the boat into the glass however way you want to look at it <laughs> but basically we've got the boat now halfway or somewhat into into these uh, blocks right here and uh, it, it lines up with these temporary blocks over here. So now we can remove these temporary blocks and we can build up uh, this side over here. And then we can get rid of all of this stuff over here, get rid of these temporary blocks. And that is all you need to do. Now, the next thing to do is to, of course, light your portal. So if we get ourselves a flint and steel, which uh, I've got prepared earlier, there we go. And we can light the portal. And of course, now, <laughs> now we've got two, and some of the, some of the wheel skeletons are gonna go for each one. So you need to do some testing to make sure that your portals link up. But as you can see, they're being pushed 
pushed out as you would expect. So let me break that to stop that happening. But that that is how you set up our portals in the overworld and also in the nether. Now let's cover the multiplayer version, the version of this farm that you can build on a server uh, because the previous version you'll, you'll have problems. So what are the problems? Well, let's talk about that first, I guess. And that is that uh, if there are other players in the overworld and one of these mobs goes through the portal, they will despawn immediately on the other side. And so they will never come back again. So that is a pretty fundamental issue uh, if you build uh, the previous version we just showed uh, on a server with other people. Now, it will work on a server if there's nobody in the overworld, but I suspect uh, if you're playing with a server with uh, any on it that's active at all then uh, that is going to be the case so uh, I recommend not building that farm uh, unless you uh, have a, a quiet time on a server where you can be a beat where you can be alone um, the other way to do it is what I'm going to show you now so this is going to what I'm going to show you now will work on a server uh, with multiple players so what is the difference well nothing here all of this is exactly the same so all the spawning platforms the portals the dogs all the spacing everything here is exactly the same so what's different well underneath there's nothing <laughs> so we don't need anything else uh, in on the nether side this is all gone because the the uh, the wither skeletons are not going to come back they're not going to come back to the nether at all we're going to just send them to the overworld and you're going to need a friend to make this farm work and you're on a multiplayer server so that's probably a good thing right team up with someone else uh, you can create a beacon shop and team up and divide the profits uh, with one of your buddies so this could be a team effort and of course you can get them involved to build the whole thing as well so there we go so uh, the first thing is yeah so don't you know don't anything else over here in the in the nether side just build the platforms as we've got here and now what you need to do is you need to set up a, you need to set up an afk spot that um, is appropriate for your for your location so what we did before was we had an afk spot down there and of course you saw before that it cut into some of the uh, uh, the area over there now because we're because we could now put our afk spot anywhere we just need to make sure that this farm is within 128 blocks of the player so what you can do now is i've put one high up there and that means that the spawning sphere is much smaller and so it means we're going to have much less spawn proofing to do so here is the spawning sphere if my player which is high up there i'll show you that in a second uh, this is the spawning sphere so you can see now is the sphere comes down to here so all of this spawn proofing we did we don't have to do anymore so with with this uh, modification it makes it even easier to do because you've got much much less spawn proofing to do so we don't have to worry about the uh, the biome itself and what we could do is we can not even bother uh, spawn proofing much of the fortress as well um so we just have to spawn proof where where the where the sphere is so this makes the farm much easier to build in the on a server as well so uh, let's go up and see where our player is so he's directly above uh, the farm so here he is on a little platform high up here so this will depend on your your own landscape so it may be beneficial to you if you've got um if you've got this uh next door to another uh, another biome so say for example you've got uh, a basalt delta right next door to you which i have got in my legacy world <laughs> so um what i can do now is i can uh, have my afk spot somewhere else and make sure that the basalt delta is not in is in no way loaded uh, or is no way within uh, the spawning sphere of the player so that's going to make my life a lot easier all right, so let's take a look at the overworld side and what has changed. Well, we have our portal as before with a boat in it, just like we did in the nether side. And now the, the wither skeletons don't have to take a big drop or anything like that. They could just come out the, straight out of the portal. Uh, they land on a couple of slabs with some hoppers underneath for collection. And then we've got a little a little chamber here where a player can stand and chop away at the at the wither skeletons as they come through. So here I've got my my usual command block, block set up just to kill the wither skeletons. You don't need that uh, in your world at all. That's just for demonstration purposes. So what you can do now is you can just enter this and just chop away. And it's simple as that. We don't have to have any kind of big drop like we did before because we don't have to send them back to the overworld. Now here with this setup, um, the, the Wither Skeletons will have a bit more health because they're not taking any full damage. But what you can do is you can set up a beacon next door and you can you can set this up with uh, strength and also regeneration. That means that your extra strength will help, help you kill the Wither Skeletons super quick. And also if you're AFK for a long period of time and, and you don't have food with you, then uh, it will save you from starving to death because it will keep you alive. The regeneration will keep you alive and so you don't starve. So that is also beneficial. Uh, all right, so that is pretty much it <laughs> so nice and simple and actually this version for the server is actually a lot easier to build next i'd like to reiterate a couple of things just to make sure uh, it's easy to build as possible and uh, and you and if you do decide to build this you don't get stuck so the first thing that will trip up some people maybe is getting the portals to link correctly so don't forget uh, what we talked about earlier in that uh, you need to divide the x and the z in the nether by eight that will give you the the x and z coordinates in the overworld and try and keep the y level the same and the best thing to do is to take a midpoint between all of the portals so go to the middle uh, the middle uh, layer the middle layer of your farm go to the, the center of it 
where you have your dog, take that take that coordinate and then do the maths from there. That will give you a good location over in this side. Now, if you if you experience uh, some of the mobs getting stuck in the portals, then just make sure you go through each of the portals with it as a player and make sure it links up over here correctly uh, because mobs won't do that themselves. So that, that should deal with all of the problems that you get and make sure you, you use this with two players. So you need one player in the nether to load the farm and make sure mobs are spawning. And you need one player over here to make sure the mobs don't despawn when they come through the portal. And of course, these, these have to be a player kill. So you need a player here to kill them anyway. So that is the most important things. I think if you do that, you should be all right. And over in the nether, I recommend making sure you build this with a double intersection. Uh, it will still work with a single intersection, of course. Uh, no worries on that front at all. Uh, but the rates won't be as good as the 1.14 version uh, that we saw earlier in the video. The main reason for that is that uh, you're increasing the walking distance that the, the, the uh, wither skeletons have to go to to go through the portal. Now, the way the reason that this double intersection is better is because um, they've got more of a walking distance, of course, but they go straight to the killing area and there's no need to try and get uh, uh, wither skeletons from potentially four different uh, drop shoots down into one one place and so we benefit from that front so double intersection is the ticket to guess the better rates i'm back in survival in the overworld and i'm chopping away at these wither skeletons getting their skulls getting ready to build my beacon shop <laughs> but um one thing i would say here is that uh, even though i've got a sharpness five sword and i've got my strength beacon i still have to hit some of them twice uh, before they die so what you might want to do here is to uh, give them a bit more of a drop so they take a bit of full damage and then there'll be a nice easy one hit kill with uh, with any reasonable sword all right i hope you found this this uh, video useful i hope you uh, enjoy building it and if you do then let me know how it goes tweet me some pictures that would be really cool so i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then please hit the like button and if you're new then feel free to subscribe and if you've got any comments or suggestions then get in that comment section all right my geeks until next time i will see you later